Okay, we are live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Early Birds Weekly Explorer webinar. Uh, my name is Chris Poria. Uh, this webinar series is run by Early Birds team to promote disruptive leaders, especially innovators. Mostly focused on startups and scale-ups who have a minimum viable product or a mature product. Today we have an Australian startup, or I would say scale-up, uh, called Wix Vision with us. Wix Vision was founded in 2011 and is a global leader in advanced intelligence surveillance, image, image analysis, computer vision technology. Uh, based in Brisbane, the company is at the forefront of fast, accurate, and robust solution for video surveillance fintech, access control, marketing, and retail applications. Applications for this technology include banks, safe cities, airports, train stations, border and immigration control, casinos, stadiums, shopping malls, military, and law enforcement organizations. Today, we welcome Ken and Jim from Wix Vision. Um, Ken has worked for a couple of startups already, um, you might know some of them, Distillery, which is intelligent systems, um, Identity, which is ID verification services. Before this company was acquired by Wix Vision or Wix Group, actually, in 2015. Uh, Ken has worked uh, with a lot of early adopters, including uh, such as Ubank in Sydney or ASB in New Zealand. We also have Jim. Jim has um, worked in digital transformation for a major bank in Australia, which uh, included customer onboarding uh, projects, marketing, and cybersecurity um, projects. Um, attendees, um, please share your questions through the chat box. Uh, in the meantime, or you can request to speak. <laughs> we open for questions. Uh, Ken and Jim, over to you. Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, can you guys see that? Is that being shared? Uh, no, you have to just press the share button again. Okay, so I'll try that again. Is that better? Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, look, I'd just like to thank uh, both Chris and Jeff for hosting this um this disruptor series and this morning we don't have a lot of time so um, what the plan is to just do very brief introductions talk a bit about who is VIX Vision what it is we do why VIX Vision and time permitting we'll do a, a very quick demonstration of the technology um, as Chris mentioned both um, uh, Jim and I have been both involved in uh, startups and uh, we've introduce technology to the market that's certainly disrupted it and we see VIX Vision as being another one of those uh, sort of startups. Just to tell you a bit about who is VIX Vision, uh, you know, we're leading the way in facial recognition and intelligent video analytics. I guess there's two main points I want to stress here is that um, we're Australian owned, uh, we have Australian developers, where um, all the support is here local, and all the data resides in Australia. So it's got a very strong Australian presence. And that's really important in this space uh, of facial recognition because there's a lot of very large companies that tend to be, um, their technology has been developed over in places like China, for example. And um, there's a lot of concerns regarding uh, the security and and data so um that's one of the things that the clients that we're dealing with is very they feel very comfortable dealing with an australian company and the second thing i really wanted to point out is that they're all of our technologies based on uh very clever algorithms that are based on deep learning techniques and we've seen uh remarkable uh increases in speed and performance of facial recognition over the last couple of years as a result of this sort of technology and so what it is we do, apart from uh, facial recognition, we're also doing a lot of um, analytical um, 
looking at, at analytical trends as well. So, um, you know, our facial recognition identifies uh, like a face in a crowd um, and we can send our off alerts to administrators. And, and the one thing we're collecting now is um, demographic data and behavioural information data. So we can detect um, from a person's uh, face their things like age, the gender, uh, emotion. Uh, we've now incorporated mask detection into the technology. We can do things like crowd counting, uh, heat maps and, and so forth. So it's quite a, a comprehensive uh, solution that we're, we're now taking to the market. If you're involved in um, introducing technology uh, to a market, probably one of the most important things you can get is your, your first client. And uh, we're fortunate enough now that we've, we've got a number of clients and I just wanted to talk through the, the use cases. Um, we've got some clubs in Australia uh, that are using our technology to help address uh, the problem gambling issue. So uh, a, a gambler can actually uh, uh, register themselves as a problem gambler. And there's a thing called a multi-exclusion list. And that means that you can exclude yourself from certain clubs and you register, you provide a, an image of yourself and that image is shared with those clubs. And as soon as you enter those clubs, your your face will be detected and alert will and it'll be compared against the exclusion list. And if you're on that list and there's a match, uh, you will, uh, an alert will go to the duty manager. And we've got two clubs that are now int introducing uh, that technology, a Karina Leagues club up in Queensland and also Churchill's. Um, and we've just been accepted by the South Australian government to be on their uh, facial recognition register. There's only two companies on that and we're one of them. And they're looking at deploying this technology over 300 clubs in uh, South Australia. Uh, one of our first early adopters was uh, Swinburne University of Technology. And that's using our uh, images technology to um, uh, for added security within the within the university um, grounds. Uh, in East Perth, um, our technology is being used uh, in a smart city project, and that's uh, connected to the uh, WA Police. And we're sending off alerts for um, uh, for known known criminals, etc., in the uh, in the East Perth Territory. And quite an innovative project is uh, the final one is a, a, a product called Face Match, which uses our technology to help match um, um, the young young children who may be suffering from intellectual disabilities, taking their their faces and matching it to other children with known disabilities, uh, and that helps in the early detection of what's called ID intellectual disabilities, and that's been headed up by the uh, by a geneticist based in Newcastle. So there are some of the use cases that we're currently um, working on. Uh, and why VIX Vision? The, the first thing is the um, Australian technology uh, is, is a very strong selling point. We've got a proven track record. We've now got about half a dozen clients using the technology. Uh, all of our fi facial recognition results um, have been submitted to uh, NIST, which is a, a UK-based standards organisation for uh, testing, and we're getting really good results from that. We've also got quite close relationships with the Depart Department of Science and Technology, DST, in Adelaide, and they've tested our algorithms. That's quite important for us to get into the Australian government. And we've just been um, approved, as I said, with Australia, uh, South Australia Government Facial Recognition uh, Panel. And then one of the one thing one of the key selling points of Vix Vision is the agility of the organisation. We're small, and um, and we're competing in a in, against some really large companies. And the only way we've discovered that we can outperform those companies is to have uh, better algorithms and better service. And that's where we're getting our traction in the market. So what I wanted to do now is I get Jim, who's our COO to do a, a, a very quick demonstration of the technology, and then uh, we can take some questions and answers after that. So, Jim, I'll just pass you pass it on to you. Thank you, Ken. Um, I'll just try sharing my screen. Give me a second. Uh, 
Okay, just uh, confirming people can see my screen now. That's good. Yes. No All right. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate appreciate, appreciate your time this morning. Um, look, there's there's a lot of stuff to go through, so I'm just going to try and cover the uh, the key parts of the system and the some of some of the highlights, um, and then maybe we can just take some questions and, and circle back on anything people have questions about. But um, our our product is is available either standalone or via various integrations with video management systems. Um, the, um, the 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 main requirement we've got basically is to be able to get data into the um, into the facial recognition engine, and we do that by um, connecting directly to cameras or integrating with other video management um, systems. Um, just for this, the purpose of this quick demo, I'm going to show our, stand, our our system, which is integrated with the Milestone VMS, and that's purely because it's easier to get data into the system and show show context. So. Uh, at a very high level, there, there's a number of key areas um, within our system. We've got a, a people database where we store all the individuals that we're interested in. Um, <clears throat> depending on the, the use case or the environment, it could be a blacklist. It could be uh, it could be blacklist of the people. It could be banned people, uh, self excluded people for for problem gambling, as Ken mentioned earlier, or it could even be VIPs. It, it all depends on what the use case is. But you can have any number of individuals in the database. And furthermore, we can also assign tags to those individuals. In in my particular database on my laptop, I've got uh, over 3,000 people enrolled and they're just random um, politicians, celebrities, people around the world. So a lot of them I don't even know, but there's there's, there's quite a few in the database. So um, once someone's enrolled, and I'll, I'll take you through a, a simple enrollment process, um, we just, to add someone to the database, we click on the, the enroll button, uh, we can then pick up a, uh, uh, an image and this image can be from the internet or pretty much from anywhere as long as it's a decent quality uh, this is uh, my old passport that's me about 30 years ago so if I select that image there the um, the system will automatically extract and crop the faces in that image and we can click on that that particular image and say I want to enroll this person um, because I'm already enrolled in the system it's picking me up as the closest match um, but if I wanted to create a new profile, I'll just click on this button here. Um, and the um, the ability to add tags, as I mentioned earlier, you can have any number of tags uh, configured in the system. And, and the tags are important when it comes to generating alarms and creating a workflow when people are detected. So it just gives you some extra um, functionality and the ability to customize your workflow. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and add this because I'm already in the system, but that just shows you one of the ways that we can add people. Um, the other way we can add people into the system, and I'll, I'll show you some of the playback capabilities of Milestone. Um, th this is just my, my my home office. Basically, I've got a, a very basic camera pointed to my my TV, uh, and we do that just to get just to get some um, some video footage in the system. But I can basically find any video footage from any from any camera basically or stored video which we can import into the system um, we've got a little button down on the bottom right here which is our images button and if we click on that what it does is it just goes and finds all the faces in that video um, field of view and identifies those and from there we can right click on the on the um, on that face we can enroll this face into the database we can add this face into the history search which I'll show you in a second or we can just save this face uh, uh, to file. Um, it works on one face or multiple faces. There's just two there. We can do the same thing here, and um, it'll identify all the faces. I'm, I should have saved some um, some uh, footage of multiple faces, um, but that, that just gives you an idea of how how easy and simple it is to to add and enroll people into the database. Um, what what just to get some data into the system um if you look on the i'll show you from from the images tab over here on the on the left of the screen we've got alarms now this as i said is just basically from me pointing my camera to to the um to the tv if i click on any of those alarms we'll see the context from those alarms so we've got jacinda we've got all sorts of manner of people and it's just random people from from the tv but it just gives you an idea of how how simple it is to to um, to detect people and how accurate it is. So I'll, I'll find one here of um, that's just me. 
sometimes it's a little bit hard to 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 see some of these these alarms come through, but that's just Cinder Ardern there. Um, you know, um, Bill Clinton. Basically, anyone that pops up on the TV who's in my database will will get an alarm created for them. Um, so, as I said, my database is full of you know basic politicians and and celebrities and actors. So it's um it it's pretty it's pretty um pretty open. But I, I suppose at a high level, it just shows you how 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 the system can um, or how accurate it is, even through a very a very cheap camera pointing to a very old. A very old TV. It'll uh, identify people, and some of these might be hard to see. But somewhere in there, you'll see uh, Matt Damon. And if I try and zoom in on that, I think that's that's him. That's him right there. So um, pretty powerful, pretty accurate. Um, we're, we're really happy with the with the results that we've been getting. Um, it's um, it's it's the technology has really come a long way in the last in the last. Um, 12 to 18 months. Just checking that people can still hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so, yeah, adding people to the system is one key area. Uh, generating alarms based on the people that we've, we've, we've enrolled is another key thing. The other, the other main area of um, difference where people get a lot of, our, a lot of um, benefit out of our system is around the, the search capability. Um, and this is just for like not just for um, uh, law enforcement, but it's also for security applications and and border protection and, and other areas. But but basically, we can we can once we've got footage into the footage in the system and we've got access to to video streams, we can basically um, I'll, I'll show you an example. We can add a photo, and I'll just use my driver's license in this example. Add uh, add an image into our search window, and we can say. Pretty basically, in the last 30 days, I want to see every time I've seen this particular person here. Uh, and we, we click on the, the search button. Now, down on the bottom here, we can see all the times that I've actually appeared on my, on my camera or on, on the video. And my system only has one camera, but you can imagine if you've got um, you know, multiple cameras, you'll get the, the same performance basically through... Uh, or, or the, the, the search will, will perform the same way through any number of cameras. Um, but over the last 30 days, these are all the times that it's the I've managed to pass go past my camera at my at my home office. Um, it'll go through and detect every every occurrence of that. Um, we could do the same thing for for alarms that we've already seen. If we've if we've got uh, our favourite friend over here, Donald Trump, um, I can right click on the image in the alarm here and right, add this face to the history search and we can perform the same test on or the same search on Donald Trump. And in my database over the last 30 days, these are all the times, and I'll just zoom in a bit closer here, these are all the times that we've, uh, we've seen Donald Trump on the TV. Um, pretty basic sort of demo or, or, or test to show, but it does highlight how, how fast and how how accurate the system can uh, can be. Um, there's a number of different tests, and, and Ken, Ken alluded to some of the other features, like the other demographic searches that we've got. But um, not only can we search for for one one particular person, we can add multiple people to to the search criteria. Uh, we've got forensic searching capabilities, so that we can say um, when I've seen two people in the same field of view. We can select find associates and also search for for um, uh, anyone who is in the field of view at the same time as those people. So it can get pretty powerful as far as um, contact tracing or, or tracking individuals across multiple camera streams. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, you know cool functionality in, in that regard. The the other area is also and I'll clear this here, but we can say. Um, not only can we look for, for particular faces through all the all the database and the video footage, we can also get into the demographic search and say, I want to see all the males um, that we've seen for um, a particular day. And I'm not sure which of these days has data, but um, I'll just leave it leave it on males for that time. So what will, what will happen is it will go through 
and and pick up all the all the images in the database of males. We can assign age groups to that as well, so we can narrow down the search to say, show me all the males between a certain age group. We can get pretty pretty fancy with the types of search and the type of criteria we can actually uh, track on. And it's all because when we when we're um, when we've configured our system uh, and integrated it into a VMS or connected it to cameras, we create the metadata in real time, and it allows us the ability to to pretty quickly and accurately go back and search that metadata for for key images or demographics or attributes. Um, so at a high level, that's pretty much that's pretty much the the basics of the system. Just trying to find some some more interesting people apart from me. Um, but there, that's that's pretty much how like all the the key parts of the the system at a very high level. So just conscious of time, I wanted to leave some time for any questions or anything else that we need to go through. No, thank you very much, Jim. Um, and this is great. Uh, I'll just. Uh, stop your screen sure yep good um, that way we can talk and uh i think we already got some questions um on this so first question comes from gordon asking what guarantees there that you are using the correct photo that's a really good question you using the correct photo yeah so you need to you need to provide the photo or the image into the system. So we um we don't know if it's the right photo. We we we'd, we'd need to rely on the people um, using the system to ensure that the data they're putting in is accurate uh, and and the correct image of people. Um, and look, it depends on the use case as well. Like some people use it for um you know as we mentioned uh, identifying um, blacklisted people or banned people. Um, it can also be used for VIP. So depending on the uh, the, the use case, it usually determines the quality of the photo that's being used. So for VIP type systems, they they they're usually uh, easily obtainable images of people that are that are happy to be to be part of the system. Whereas if you're looking for um, banned people, blacklisted people, or criminals, you you typically don't don't have the opportunity to get a good photo of them. So you might need to rely on, on historic video footage, as I showed you earlier, to um, enroll people or, or obtain their images from, from another way, from police files or from um, um, known, known suspect lists. Okay. And if, it, if it's a facial verification type of uh, application, uh, one of the checks you may do on uploading a photo is to authenticate the actual uh, the ID cred credential to driver's licence or passport. So it's an, depending on the use case. Yeah, okay, now that's great. The next question is how does your technology work uh, during COVID, uh, that means with masks on? Yeah, um, it works very, very well with masks. We've actually retrained the algorithms to include um, mask detection and mask verification. And it's important that you make that, that distinguish, uh, distinguish that, that difference. Um, because first of all, we've got basically um a separate model that will that will um that will match people wearing a mask yeah. uh so the algorithm is smart enough to detect people wearing masks and if it finds someone's wearing a mask and we need to do a verification we will switch to a separate algorithm which has been trained to identify people who are wearing masks so um the the accuracy rates are about 10 to 15 percent less compared to non-masked um, identification, but in the scheme of things, it's 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 very very accurate, um, and and it just comes down to how you configure the system in that environment to achieve the be the best results. But we're getting excellent excellent results with with masks, and it, it comes down to the fact that the way the um, the system has been designed, it was originally designed to um, to identify people in low light and uncooperative environments. So we've just extended that now to um, include include masks, whereas before it was people wearing, you know, beards or hats or glasses or, or trying to make, put in basic disguises. Um, we've just extended that capability to include masks. And the, as I said, the results are quite quite, quite outstanding. Okay. No, thank you, uh, Jim, for that. And there are a couple of questions around uh, the key differentiators from the other tool in the market, uh, more specifically like Microsoft Face recognition or any other technology. 
So what, what what do you see? How do you see different from some of the other vendors? Yeah, look, Microsoft is an interesting one. They've got a very, very good algorithm because they um, pretty much capture all the faces that are used in Microsoft Hello and use that data to train their algorithm. Um, look, the key differentiators from us is that we um, we, we are, like lo just like Microsoft, we can run in the cloud environment, but um, uh, further to Microsoft deployment, we can actually run in a standalone environment as well. So we can run on a dedicated server behind people's firewalls or in their data center. Um, so having the ability to run cloud or or standalone is a is a key thing for us. Um, our our algorithms are very small form factor, so they can be we can be we can install quite easily behind someone's um, firewall in their corporate environment, um, and not have to rely on cloud. So that that you know allows us to be a, or build in more security and more capabilities around a, a, a centralized centralized system. Um, and look, some of the other key differentiators are, apart from the fact that we are Australian and all the all the development work and all the data is stored locally, um, we 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 do have capabilities not just for the facial recognition, but for the uh, other analytics that Ken mentioned, like age, gender, and demographics. Um, and we do have the the additional search capabilities, especially the forensic search, which allows us to do you know basic things like contact tracing and um, and look for known associates in. In, in large large sort of areas, so there there is quite a quite a, quite a few differentiating features features that that um put us above some of our competitors. Great. Yeah, the, the other thing, the other thing to note is most of the um, projects projects we've worked on in Australia, the clients have actually requested some little tweaks to the system, and we're able to accommodate that. Whereas you will never find that sort of uh, capability within Microsoft. You take what you get. Yep. That's great, and uh, I think the other question is more around the privacy. Uh, what uh, you know, for example, the question is: How do you have to get a get an approval uh, from individuals before uploading their photos in your system? Um, and what is the privacy issue using you know some potentially random photos as part of definitely usage of of your platform? Do you want to take that one, Ken? Or you're, you're <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, look, I'll, I'll try to answer that. Look, when it comes to um, uh, privacy, that there there isn't that much. There isn't anything in the legislation or the laws in Australia uh, that prevents facial recognition from being used. Um, there is some 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 legislation coming out of the UK in the GDPR sort of requirements, but but basically. Uh, facial recognition is is not that much different to CCTV footage, where the only requirement the government's mandate is that you have a sign saying that CCTV is in use in the area. Um, as far as getting people's people's um, uh, permission, look if it's if the system is used in a um, uh, in an environment where you have you're using it for 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 monitoring or or identifying VIPs or things like problem gamblers, where people have requested that, you, that 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 their images is or they have consented to their images being used then there's no problem in that regard but when it comes to identifying things like criminals or um, known um, known known criminals or, or blacklisted people the chances of you getting their consent is very very slim um, but you're using the system to to identify people who are where you're going to protect the environment or, or protect the um protect the uh, the community basically so in a nutshell there's no real requirement to to um, other than getting people's consent if if you want to upload their images if they if it's going to be used for uh, positive sort of um, use cases but for monitoring known criminals and, and suspects things like that then I don't think there, there's any any requirement to, to get that get their permission so okay. yeah. it's all a little bit open I was going to say that the entire system has been designed with that GDPR principles in mind. Now that um, those that regulation is now in force in Europe, and it's likely that Australia will follow suit. So, like uh, Jim said, it's either if it's consent driven, we acquire consent. If you're not, if the use case means you can't store um, faces, well, we can store metadata. Um, and quite often, it's up to the client to make the decisions about the privacy. 
and, and we comply with whatever the client says. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much, Ken and Jim, for your presentation. Very, very interesting. And I'm sure that uh, with this presentation, uh, you know, a lot of our SME consultants um, and partners will get back to you with questions um, and further, uh, further engagement. Thank you very much uh, for your time today. And thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate your time as well. Have a good day then. Thank you.